Hi, today we're going to look at fixing an issue with an iPad which is doing some phantom taps. So we need to have a look at why that happens and how we can fix it. It's a massive problem with iPad minis and a lot of people will stop fixing iPad minis and they'll say it's not worth their time anymore because they just keep coming back saying no there's these phantom taps and stuff. So it's a bit disheartening, sometimes these come back and you just have to try and fix it usually you would get another screen because it's usually a fault with the way that the screen's put together or the way that the finish and bits are put on the screen uh, but there is a way to fix it um, we've got one here uh, and we'll have a look at how to actually do that so here we go so here it is this is ipad mini it's a first generation ipad mini i'll just take it out of this case so you'll see that it's not responding not responding all the time if we push here, it'll start responding. Let me just show you in here. So you'll see it scrolls fine here. It's scrolling fine. Let's just turn it this way. And this is obviously scrolling the other way. It still scrolls fine. But eventually what's going to happen is it's going to start just freaking out and it'll start clicking on everything randomly. Um, let's see if we can make it do it. There we go. See, it's, it's just doing stuff all by itself there. I mean, you can see the problem there. Let's see if we can get it to do something else. See, it's doing it again there. It's just jumping about, and sometimes even when you press hard on these bits, see, it's closed it there. We didn't press the button. Let's go back in the settings. Press there, it's doing random things. Let's just get it open, and we'll have a look at what we can do to sort that out. So I replaced this screen not that long ago. It shouldn't be too hard to get off. You can see the Wi-Fi antenna down the bottom there, the one with the white border around it, that one there. And there's another antenna over there, none of them are stuck on, so that's great. This is also full of dust in here. I'm going to reseal this completely, so I'll just take all this adhesive off and we'll put new adhesive on. So I'm just finishing getting this off and being very careful not to move because I don't want to take the whole thing apart. There's no need for that at this stage, maybe after if this doesn't fix it. Right, so here is the problem. When you, when you buy these new screens, they don't come like sealed at all. And that's a real issue because you've got open contacts like this these bits, all this stuff along here, all this silver along here, like the contacts are coming out the bottom of that. So if that touches onto the casing, it'll short it out and it makes the screen think something's happened. And that's where you get the phantom touch from and all that nonsense. We're gonna cover all that up. So we're just gonna get some of this Captain tape and we'll just roll this out and we're gonna stick it right across all of this. We're using it as a sort of insulator here to stop these metal contacts shorting out against the the casing. That's better. And hopefully that will sort out the problem. We'll be able to see fairly quickly because it didn't take long to make it do something crazy before. This is a heat uh, insulating tape as well so you, it stops the, it's heat proof sorry so you can't set fire to it. If it gets hot it's not going to ruin anything. This piece here is the controller for the home button so when you press that button it activates in this chip and sends the control through this wire up into the logic board that plugs into the logic board these bits here are the inputs from the touch screen but we'll have a look now and see if that has solved our problem by insulating that so we'll turn it upside down and have a look in here we need to make sure that this wire is always folded down the way. Um, getting that wire kinked in the wrong direction will cause you the same sort of trouble you'll get phantom taps and all that nonsense. It's back into the settings up here, turn it sideways again and I'm going to push it down as if it was glued down and just see I'm just twisting it back and forward like it was before and we don't appear to be getting any craziness going on so I think that's looking okay actually. And just press it in random bits and when we were pressing here it was taking it out of settings and back to the, 
the home screen. So it is doing that actually. Let's see what we can do about that. So all of these problems are all can, and we're getting a move in there because we've just taken it apart. All of these problems are contained in here. So whatever it is that's causing it is in this part of the iPad. In fact, you know what? Let's take the tape off and just do a test again of the sort of twisty movement and see if that does come back now to sort of prove the point. Pushing it down really hard and then twisting it and you can see it's moving about already there. And this is tapped and it's taking itself all over the shop right so let's just tw switch that off before something crazy happens. Had to take the tape off anyway because it, we need to do something about this home button. I'm just going to listen to see when I press this if I can hear it clicking. Can definitely hear something. Let's just take it off again. We'll have another look. I wonder if that's the wrong home button. Here is a home button off of an original iPad screen. Let's do this this way instead. Just going to peel this connector up. Um, that all looks fine, but really what I'm interested in here is to see if that home button is a different depth let's have a look so you can see this this one's got all the sort of shielding on it this one's got nothing it's just a plastic home button and i would say yes it's very much bigger there's two little locating pins here that are just much bigger than these ones so i'm going to put this home button in it just stick that in there stick that down again but that's much better but you can see now push that nothing happens push the button comes on um, see, pushing it. Oh, but we are getting phantom taps because we've not put the tape on. Let's get the tape back on quick. Nah. That's no good. I think this screen's just. I think we're going to give up on this screen. Seems to think I'm tapping. Oh, that doesn't work. Tapping all over the shop. Look this filth here, is this maybe causing some hassle? Nah, this is gumped. Oh well, it was worth a shot. I've done a bit of tinkering off camera and I've found the problem. The problem is that I've been a bit generous with the tape. Remember I said that this needs to be, if this cable gets bent in the wrong place, it's going to cause you some problems. So when I've been putting it back together, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but when you push that down, because of where the tape is, this bend here, here, this bend, I'll just fold it back, that bend, where, so it bends here and then it bends back the way on this bit. And that bend was just in the wrong place because if we look what's happening with this tape you'll see it should be further down and we've covered that up I'm just going to chop this tape a bit and this should be the answer put that one there and you can see that the bit where that's going to bend is open now so I'll just put that back to general make sure the camera bracket's in the right place and then we want to fold this down so that it's in the right place. So you want to get these and put them in there. Now the fold has to go under the metal but otherwise it's not folded right and it's quite difficult to do this. There. And the way that I found that that was the problem, so you can see it's doing it again there when I press that, it's tweaking that cable and that's not what we want. Let's take it off again. Before when we were pushing there it was going crazy. Now nothing. So it's all about that fold, so we need to insulate it. Oh, and sorry, the way I found that that was the, the problem was I, ch I looked here. What I did was I got my pegs and I pegged it up like this. And I thought, let's have a look and see how it behaves. I also did a hard reset. So I put my pegs on it like that. And I was just having a feel around. And I could feel that this bit was under the ridge here. But this bit was above the ridge, but now it's under it. And the reason it was above the ridge you guessed it and the wee cable was poking over so that was stopping it from pushing down properly everywhere else is over the ridge uh, under the ridge even now we're golden again everything's fine you can't see this i'll have to block it out okay so i've had that one for a wee while now nothing crazy seems to be happening all looks 
pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue it. We we'll have to take it apart again, unfortunately. And then we're going to glue it up. These are the iPad stickers. So the way we put the iPad back together, we start at the top, peel the back and off, peel, and then peel down this side. Peel that slice off. Okay, let's just have one more check for fingerprints. Dusting for prints. A little bit of filth here. A little bit of fingerprint in the corner. Put the camera in place first. The camera in place. Peel that off. Now, the all important piece. We need to make sure that this is folded right under. We'll fold it back first. And that's that. Have a check what it's like. No issues. Scroll's just fine. Hold in there. Scroll's just fine. This side. Scroll's just fine. So it looks like that's solved the problem. Perseverance is key. So that took a wee bit longer than anticipated to sort out. We had two problems. We only realised we had one. We had one, the r phantom taps. Managed to fix that with the uh, captain tape. Noticed the, p the problem with the button when we were pushing it hard to see if we could get to do something. Then we've sorted the problem with the button uh, and then we managed to make another problem with the with the phantom taps and it all just comes back to this you know you need to make sure that these devices are put back together properly because if they're not you're going to have these problems now the screen's stuck down everything seems to be absolutely fine so we fixed the problem with the button by using an apple original home button instead of the this one which came with it but that's a fixed iPad now. And I will be testing it you know, throughout the night. It's not due to go back to the customer until tomorrow. So I'll be testing it later on tonight. If it does cause any more problems, I'll put a new screen on it and write that one off as faulty. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment and subscribe if that's helped you. And there'll be more videos like this coming soon. If it has helped you, if you've managed to fix your iPad by following my steps or fix a customer's iPad by following my steps, uh, please drop a little comment below and let me know how you managed to solve the problem if you did something different to me. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later.